What's up, y'all? I'm Andy Storer, your neighborhood art director that designs movie posters for a living. I've actually worked for pretty much every major Hollywood movie studio and or streaming service like Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon over the past few years. And now I wanna share what I've learned with you. This tutorial, I'm gonna show you the quick and easy way to create or rather blend four different styles and techniques to create an amazing graphic that can be used for movie posters, a school project, or album art, you name it. The styles we'll be using are bitmap, pixelated rainbow stretching technique, some typography warping, and blending it all together and distressing it with some textures. You're gonna love this tutorial and you're gonna learn something from beginning to end, so make sure you watch it all the way through. And without further ado, let's dive on in. <laughs> What? All right, y'all, let's get this Photoshop party started. First things first, just want to go over what I will be using for this bitmap stretch effect. So for assets slash photography, I have this awesome pick of a, I want to say, rapper, b-boy, dancer that looks awesome, colors great. Pick this up over at Envato.com, which is a stock photography website with plenty of graphics and other assets that you can work with. They have licensed licensable assets that you can use on commercial projects. So check out their license and check them out and subscribe because if you do, we do get a little something, something for sending business their way. The second asset that I will be using in this tutorial, I believe is this concrete texture, which I picked up over at texturelabs.org, which has a great selection of free textures. And of course, if you want to find something on the interwebs for the free 99 version, then check out unsplash.com as they have a lot of really cool photography. The idea of this tutorial is to create a stretch effect from him turn it into a bitmap so that it's more graphic, and then we're gonna add some text to it. And it all sounds a little complicated, but it's not when you break it down to these steps. The cool thing is, is that I learned about this technique, I don't know, I wanna say maybe a year ago, maybe a little longer, and I, I learned the pixel stretch effect from, yes, I'm a designer. Uh, this guy has a really cool YouTube channel, which I highly suggest you go check out as well. I think we're just taking it to the next level, making it a little more graphic. And this is something that I've wanted to use in a movie poster. Uh, I've pitched the idea before, but it's never been picked. All we're going to do is mask this guy out. And if you're new to masking, then go check out one of the videos that I made on how to mask a gun and replace it with another gun. Really exciting stuff. I'm just going to speed through this and you guys can kind of chill out while I, while I do this. All right, our subject is masked out and looking good. All we're gonna do is just make a copy by hitting Command J and we're gonna turn that into a smart object. And then we're just going to hide the layer below and just put this down below our background just in case we ever had to go back to it. We make a lot of mistakes uh, when we're designing posters or graphic design in general. And it's always good to have whatever you masked out and spent time on uh, ready to go if you need so if you need to use it. I also want to mention if you guys haven't done a bitmap before, I have an awesome tutorial that I created on how to create a color bitmap using the same model, uh, just a little different uh, scenario where we didn't add the stretch and the stretch type. So go check that out. It's also a good one, but you will learn a lot of what uh, I do in that video in this video. Go ahead and move our subject to the right. The idea is we're going to create the pixel stretch effect now and then and then turn everything into the bitmap and then work on the typography. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you're on our subject layer and then hold down the option key and then with your arrow key, just tap it to the left once. And that's gonna make a copy and it's gonna move it over one pixel length. Now that layer, this top layer, which we just created, we can go ahead and rasterize it. And the reason being is because we don't wanna flood our file size so that it's so large that it's hard to work with because we're gonna be making multiple copies. For our rasterized layer, all we're gonna do is hit Shift, Option, and the left arrow key. And that's gonna make another copy moving the pixels, I don't know, a little further away. 
So we're just gonna make a bunch of these. And the idea is we want to make sure that we're gonna be able to create a horizontal line, I mean a vertical line, that's gonna hit all of these different colors in our subject. Over here, now that we have enough copies made, we're just going to merge all of the rasterized layers below the top layer. So don't mess with him right now. And I'll, I'll show you why. So go ahead and select all of these, except the smart object, right click, and then we're going to merge layers. Hit Command R if, if your rulers aren't there, and then you're just gonna drag out a line. We wanna make sure that line goes from the top, the, the up, most color to the bottom most color in one in one swooping motion I guess that's how you explain it I don't know I'm not very articulate today <laughs> and then we're gonna go up to our rectangular marquee tool and making sure that we're all the way to the top we're just going to have our marching ants hang out on top of that guide perfectly let it go and now you're just gonna hit command J and make a copy within the marquee tool and then you can hit Command H to get rid of that guide. And then we can drag this guy all the way to the top. And if, and if you want, we can just go ahead and hide these layers. Hit Command T and you're gonna wanna make sure that you hold down the Option key or Alt on PC. And we're just going to drag these colors all the way out to about here and then hit enter and now we have some really awesome pixelated stretched colors and from here we're just going to drag our rasterized top layer or our guy our rasterized guy and we can just drag him to the left right here and then we can just mask away on that bottom layer by hitting the mask icon creating a mask and then you can just get the lasso tool, get rid of this little section here. We could also get rid of this middle section as well. We'll just mask that out. And then up here on the hat. So that's looking pretty good. And if we want, we can just move this over to the left a little more so we have a little more wiggle room like that. And now we can just apply this layer mask by right clicking and then go apply layer mask and that gets rid of that. And now the cool thing we get to do is make a little curve on our rainbow and you might want to zoom out so you can kind of see and what we'll do is warp this but first let's drag this in a little bit like that i got a little carried away with the tutorial and i forgot to ask you to hit that like button if you're enjoying this video and learning a ton hit the like button now i really appreciate it it makes us feel like we're doing something right From here we're just going to transform or i should say warp so go ahead and hit command t actually let's stretch it out a tad by holding down the option actually just don't hold down option just hit just stretch it out to there hit enter hit command t again and now right click to warp and we can kinda start to drag this layer down, or the top portion of our rainbow, and then the other portion up a little, and then eventually just have this go over like that, and then just drag our bottom up a little more like this. And don't worry about this, we can go ahead and mask that out later if we need to. And then go ahead and hit enter. And we have ourselves a twisted rainbow stretched pixel. And now let's just go clean up this little spot right here. Staying on the same layer, hit the mask icon, zoom on in. We can just mask out anything that needs to be masked out again. All right, this is looking awesome. Now we can get rid of that layer, the layers we don't need. You might as well just hang on to the smart object. And then uh, we still have that concrete texture. I'm just gonna put that up here for now. Now we can actually go ahead and go to image and we're gonna have to create a duplicate artboard. So image duplicate, and then we can call this whatever you wanna call it, copy, doesn't really matter. Hit okay. And now we have this this other artboard, which we're going to have to use to turn into our bitmap. So from here, go up to image, mode, grayscale, merge, discard. And now we have a grayscale image, which allows us to use a bitmap before if this wasn't grayscale we wouldn't be able to go to bitmap so now that we're at grayscale we do the bitmap hit bitmap flatten layers okay leave it on 100 pixels per inch halftone screen okay 
and then whatever shows up as the default should be fine and the shape is diamonds so hit ok and now we have this awesome bitmap technique which is very simple what we'll need to do now is turn this image back to grayscale so that we can so that we can copy it because right now it's not letting us do anything if you look over here there's a lock on that layer so go back up to image mode grayscale just hit okay and now we can go over here unlock that layer all we need to do now is hit command c to copy it and then go back to our our color artboard and hit command v and that's going to copy our piece of art over here and now we can just drag that below our color layers in our art folder and then we just want to hit command t and drag this so that it's the same size as our other piece by holding down shift and option and then just stopping when we get to the edges something like that which is fine from here what i want to do is just mask out this image so what i'm going to do is just get the pen tool out and mask it out and get rid of that white background and there we go so we have this extra little layer going around them so that it looks like a cutout collage piece which is the effect we're going for and then we can also see what it's going to look like with a little bit of color still involved our rasterized layer if you guys want to see what it's going to look like with a little bit of color uh, you can always play around with the blending mode but since this is going to be more of a graphic situation i don't want it to be too strong so maybe we'll just leave a little bit of color in there like that and now what i want to do is just add a tiny bit of shadow over here and then maybe a little bit of brightness right here on our rainbow to give it a little more dimension so we'll add a new layer and then on top of this we're just going to paint with some black and then we'll just it's going to look ugly like that but we'll we'll go ahead and tune it up a little bit with a mask so now go ahead and hit the mask icon actually put the blending mode to probably a darken or a multiply something like that and now we're just going to mask this out a little bit so on the mask layer i'm just going to paint with actually let's use a pen tool and just make sure that we get rid of all that shadow where it doesn't need to be or it's not supposed to be and now we can just kind of oops we missed a little spot up here i'm just going to paint that out and then in here i'm just going to whoops on a low flow of around three or four percent just kind of paint this away it doesn't have to be perfect and then in here just get rid of some of that and then just keep on painting away or use your pen tool to mask it out there we go and then maybe we'll add a little brightness with a new layer up here so i'm just going to paint with some white and then maybe a little right here makes it a little more dynamic in a way add a layer mask and get rid of anything that we don't need it like that all right now let's go ahead and add some type so if i was working on a movie or whatever client i was working for that needed this kind of a treatment maybe it's a logo or maybe it's the movie title or the whatever company you're working for but for this situation i'm just going to call this stretch for now so i hit t I'm just gonna make this bigger, hit Command T, hold your finger down on Shift, and I just want this to sit in the darker area of our rainbow. So it's gonna, it actually works out really nicely. And then the, the font that I'm using is called B4. Now I'm gonna rasterize it. So rasterize your type layer, hit Command T, and I'm just gonna start stretching it right away like this. You really don't wanna stretch type in general, but for this situation, it's gonna be okay. We might have to go a little further. I just want it to clear the loop-de-loop. -loop. All right, now let's do this again. Hit Command T and we're gonna warp it and we're going to bring this layer down and then try and follow these lines as best as we can. And it can get a little distorted and just kind of have some fun with it. It might take you a couple times to figure it out, which is totally fine. 
Now we can add a mask to our type and get rid of this part and then have it sneak underneath our dancer. And to do that really easily is to go back to that dancer layer and hit command so that it selects that. And then up here, hit command delete. Actually make sure your secondary color is on black and then hit command delete and it'll get rid of that part nice and easily. And then over here, we're just going to use the pen tool. And I'm just gonna fix that T a little bit and then just go back in and mask out some more. All right, now on our type layer, let's go ahead and throw a little blending mask in there so that it blends into our bitmap and gives it a little bit of a better technique. Overlay, I think overlay is gonna be our winner. And then you can see how it's not going to, it kind of gets a little weird right here. So we might wanna turn down our shadow and adjust that with the opacity so that it, so we want this bitmappy stuff to come through all the way. And now let's just go ahead and change out the color for our type using a adjustment layer. And I think like a really cool green would look good. So we're just going to use a clipping mask option, command G and attach that to our, our type. And then you can just kind of play with the color and see what's gonna look good. And then I, I know we got our guy over here. Let's just see what it looks like without him. And if we want this to just basically painting in a little black right now to get that type to read a little better. Just gotta fake it till you make it. And then let's see our guy. Let's just add a little bit of color maybe. Cool. And now let's see what happens when we add our concrete to the top. So we wanna make sure, just wanna make sure this is gonna go on top of everything and maybe do a little blending mode and then make sure it's in black and white by hitting Command U and drop in the saturation. All right, you guys, I had to go over to Texture Labs really quick and find a little piece of paper for the rest of this tutorial. I think it's gonna make it look even better. I, I was looking at this piece, which we can add a little bit of texture on top, but uh, I'll put the description for these down below. So this piece of paper has some really nice creases in it. I'm going to drop this on top of our background, and then I think I'm gonna go ahead and hit Command-I and invert that, and then I think we can kind of mess with the blending mode like that. And then I'm just gonna take our art effects and type layer or folders, hit Command G, and then we're just gonna, this is kind of a down and dirty way of doing things, but we're just going to try and find a, a blend mode that kind of works. Actually, I don't like any of them really, so we're just gonna take that same piece of paper, make a copy, drop that on top, and then maybe just add some texture on top. Actually, let's get rid of the invert and then play with the blending mode, see if anything starts to click. Not really, but maybe we just add this texture back. Cool, I can live with that. Just made it smaller, uh, add some texture, darken the background so it pops a little more. And then it's up to you guys what you wanna do with either keeping it black and white or adding a little color to have the guy pop. I don't know, what do you guys think? Would you keep the color or would you rather not see the color in your graphic design? And then leave a comment below and let me know your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I really appreciate it. 